a while back, I made a video showing you five annoying features in Silhouette Studio and how to turn them off. Today, we're going to go through five features that are in Basic Edition, which means everybody can use them, everybody should be using them, but hardly anybody does. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC license instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success, and I do hope that you're going to join our little community. We would absolutely love to have you. Big shout out to Vera Guest and Sandy Anderson. They are the newest members of the Silhouette Sidekick community. I really do appreciate the support. Now this is going to be short and sweet, so let's do this. The first thing we are going to look at is panel mode. That is down in your preferences here. Look for the little blue gear. We are going to head to the second tab, which is defaults and scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll find panel mode. If you click on this little down arrow here, you'll see that you have the option to have flexible panel mode, single panel mode, or multiple panel mode. Most people run the software in single panel mode, and that means that you can have one panel open at a time. If you click on another panel, the first panel will close, the second will open up, in the top right hand corner here and it will just continue to close the old one open the new one in that same spot let's take a look at flexible panel mode now with flexible panel mode you can have a panel open in the top right corner same as single panel mode if you click on another one it changes just like in single panel mode however if you take this panel and move it over just grab it at the top and move it around a little bit, you can open up a second panel in that spot. Now, if you click on another one, it will switch it. If it's left up in this top right corner here, it's just going to switch. It's going to funnel through whatever you click on. But again, if you grab a hold of it and move it out of the way, then you can open up another one and you can have as many panels open as you want. Let's go ahead and click out of all of these and take a look at multiple panel mode. Now with multiple panel mode, when you open up a panel, it sets right in the top right corner there as usual. If you click on a second one, it will open that one up, third one, and it will just keep stacking the panels as many as you'd like and you can rearrange them and move them around. Now you can see these are all clicked together, so they are going to move as one group. You can close them out with the little X here. If you click on that top X, it closes out all of the panels that are underneath it. It's just a really neat feature. Now panel mode goes hand in hand with the next feature that you should be using and that's under the file tab and it is the new project wizard. When you click on new project wizard, this menu pops up and you can scroll down and see that there's quite a few options here. You've got blank document, card, emboss, gift tag, pick scan, print and cut, sketch, stamping, and stipple. When you click on a new project, we will pick card and then start. It's going to open up a new design page. The card will bring in a template for you to use. This card is designed to be five by seven and it has the score line in place for you already. Now the card template only opens up the page setup panel. However, if we click on the new project wizard again and choose print and cut, it is going to open up a new design page with the registration marks turned on it's going to open up the offset panel for you and the trace panel for you so that you have the tools that you need to work with a print and cut project open and ready to go. It is a time saver. The next feature we are going to look at is the simplify feature. This is good for reducing the number of nodes in your element. Now, I know that a lot of users, especially new users, are intimidated by 
editing points and they avoid them at all costs. We're gonna try to get over that step by step. Now, when I pull up the editing points on the circle, you can see that there are four editing points. It's a perfect circle because I drew it from the drawing tools. I held down my shift key. This is a perfect circle. Let's switch this over to black for just a minute. Let's grab our trace panel, select trace area, and do a quick trace on this. Nothing fancy, just a quick trace. Now we can fill this in with black and they look exactly the same. Now you can see here there are a ton of editing points. These are called nodes. You can come over here and look at the node count. There are actually 34 nodes or editing points in the traced image. Click on the original and there are four. So that's a big difference. That will affect the way that this cuts out. You'll get a nice smooth cut on the original and the second one it's going to take longer to cut out it's going to be noisier and it's not going to be as smooth so what you can do is come right up here this icon looks like a capital s with some dots around it let's click on that and you will see that that brought the node count down drastically we can look over here and see there are now five nodes which is much much better now this is still not going to be a perfect circle the trace feature is not ever perfect but this is going to be a lot better so use the simplify function especially if you're tracing but also if you're bringing in designs from say creative fabrica or the design store somebody had to create them now a lot of creators will go through and simplify the pattern before they upload it and sell it to you, but some do not. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you're simplifying your cut lines and your projects are going to take less time to cut out and they will look better. Use the simplify feature. Now let's close down the point editing panel. I want to snag this and fill it in with color and head up to the send panel. This is the simple cut. This is what most people use. In the simple cut, everything is lit up with red lines and everything on this mat will cut. Let's take a look at cut by line. Now you can see that this one is lit up in red and this one is lit up with black. Over here we have our black line color and our red line color and these represent each of these. So if you just want the pink circle to cut, it has the red outline, you could uncheck the black one. Now that cut line is not lit up, so you know that only the pink one will cut and vice versa. We can click off on the red, click on the black, and then this black one will cut. Now another neat thing about cutting by color is that you can switch up your material for just one of these. Let's say I had a circle that I wanted to cut out of cardstock and I had a circle that I wanted to cut out of vinyl. We could choose the black one, set it to cardstock. This square here would be black and all of the cut details would be down here. Now, if we want to take and switch our red material to vinyl, we could choose the material there. All of the cut settings would be down in here. If we click on the black square, it shows us the settings. If we click on the red square, it shows us our settings. So you have a lot of different options when you cut by color. And you can cut by line color or you can cut by fill color and the premise is still the same. The last thing I want to look at is also in the send panel, but we need to switch our page setup a bit. Let's go to our cutting mat options and select none and let's choose custom for the media and let's set our height to 25. So obviously we are cutting off of a roll at this point. We can go to our send panel and as long as your material is set to vinyl, it will recognize that that is a roll. And then you will have this automatic cross cut pop up here. You can click on the little arrow and it will bring up some options. This little box here says enabled. 
If we click that, then the machine will automatically cut the vinyl off of the roll here at this line. I have it checked relative to job. So that means it will cut out the design, give it enough space, and then cut the vinyl off the roll. If we move this down, you can see that the cutoff line moves as well. If you want to adjust the cutoff point yourself, you can uncheck the relative to job box and adjust the offset with the slider or the arrows and you can get it pretty close. So if you are cutting rolled vinyl, I highly suggest that you use the automatic cross cut feature. It's going to give you a nice clean line on your rolled vinyl. It's going to be nice and straight and squared up and it's going to be the perfect start to your next project. What's your favorite feature in Basic Edition that everyone can use? Let's help everyone out, create something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.